Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're continuing the adventure. The Hybrid Tamer, huge shout out to the amazing author. Check out their details in the description below. Want to follow along? The link's right there for you. In this session, we'll be exploring chapters 8 to 13. Don't forget to smash that like button and drop a comment. Your engagement helps us out with the algorithm and means the world to us. All right, let's jump into the story. In the same clearing as last time, Naruto and Rinamon stood several yards across from each other with the former stretching and the latter standing in her signature casual battle stance. While Rinamon looked the same, Naruto now wore a black denim jacket. Meanwhile on the sidelines, Rika sat cross-legged while shifting through a stack of her Digimon cards with a critical eye. Occasionally, she would pull one of them out and setting it into one of two smaller stacks on either side of herself. Hope you're ready, cause this time I'm going all out. Naruto said with an excited grin as he rotated the wrist of his new arm, causing the joint to crack softly. Rinamon rolled her eyes before giving a dismissive shrug. You were not the only one holding back last time, I will not be making that mistake this time. She stated, keeping up a facade of casual dismission and confidence while internally she was slightly nervous. Unlike any of the Digimon she'd fought in the past, Naruto had the speed to keep up with her easily, thus negating her normal maneuverability advantage and the strength to both withstand the digital fox's blows and strike right back. Not only that, but his raw stamina and endurance exceeded hers by a large margin, meaning she couldn't use her usual strategy of tricking her opponent into wearing themselves out before going in for the finishing blow. Her only feasible plan at the moment would be to take Naruto down fast before she became too tired herself. However, even that had problems as she only had a very vague idea of what her opponent's full skill set was based on her last fight with him and his memories. But what she did know hinted that he had a very large number of tricks up his sleeve, especially now that he had two arms again. On the other hand, her only trump cards were her Diamond Storm and whatever DG modifications Rika used on her. Speaking of which, said Redhead finally finished what she was doing and put the large stack of cards in her card case before grabbing the smaller ones as she stood up. Walking up to Naruto, she hesitated for a brief moment before handing him one of the stacks. Here, they're basic boosting, recovery, and equipment cards so if anything goes wrong it shouldn't be too bad. Rika told him, receiving a nod of understanding in response as the blonde quickly looked over the cards before pocketing them. This bar would also be the first time they tested if the unusual Digivus Naruto now had would be able to Digimodify like Rika's, so it was better to be safe than sorry. Though the tomboy had to give him a thorough explanation on both the game itself, and how the cards worked first. With her piece done, Rika walked back to the sidelines while pulling out her Digivis and a smirk on her lips. Unlike Rinamon, Rika had the utmost confidence that her partner would come out victorious this time since she was there now. Let's get this going then, she said impatiently, making Naruto chuckle as he pocketed the cards and Rinamon to simply nod her head. The two fighters vanished in a blur of movement, and in less than a second reappeared right in front of each other. Both immediately started throwing, blocking, and deflecting punches and kicks, with each solid impact creating a small shockwave that caused Rika to stumble slightly before managing to stabilize herself. It remained a completely equal exchange of attacks for several seconds, but soon enough the inevitable happened and one of them slipped up. In this case, it was Naruto as he overcommit to a punch that Rinamon dodged, leaving him wide open to the knee, she embedded into his stomach swiftly followed by a backhand that sent him tumbling backwards. Ow! Naruto grunted as he stood back up and shook off his disorientation. Did you just bitch slap him OF? He was cut off mid-sentence as Rinamon punched him in the chest several times, making him rise off the ground and float for a brief few seconds, then ended the combo with a powerful drop kick that sent him straight into the dirt. Yes, yes I did. She answered his unfinished question with a small smirk as she gazed at his downed form. Said smirk was quickly wiped off her face however as Naruto suddenly shot upwards and blindsided her with a headbutt to her lower jaw. Badly dazed and disoriented, she stumbled back several steps until she ended up tripping over her own tail and falling to the ground. Before she even had a chance to recover, Naruto grabbed one of her legs with a slightly bloody grin and started spinning extremely fast. Rinamon tried to free herself by kicking at her opponent with her free leg but kept missing thanks to her rapidly building nausea and double vision. Just as she was certainly about to hurl however, her flight came to a sudden and very painful end when Naruto leapt into the air while turning sideways. This resulted in her smashing into the ground with enough momentum to leave a decently sized crater. Rather dizzy from that maneuver himself, 
Naruto stumbled around drunkenly before plopping down on his ass and covering his mouth as his face turned a sickly green. Erp, I'm never doing that again. He groaned, swallowing the bile building up in his throat as he waited for the world to stop moving. Rinamon wasn't much better as she slowly pushed herself up, coughing out a mouthful of dirt, blood, and even a few teeth in the process. Damn it, shouldn't have let my guard down. She thought while shaking her head to clear up the cobwebs in her mind. Is that seriously it? You both get a little dizzy and you're done. Pathetic. Rika said with a huff before going through the cards in her hand, thus missing the annoyed looks both Naruto and Rinamon sent at her. Finding the card she wanted, Rika was just about to swipe it through her digivis when she felt something cold and metallic press against her neck, making her freeze up and drop her card. As Tsunade-bachan would say, don't talk shit unless you can back it up. Naruto's voice said as an almost perfect doppelganger of the blonde revealed himself behind her with a kanai held at Rika's throat. The only discernible difference between him and the Naruto currently on the field being that he lacked a digivis in his foxified arm. Now how about you stop acting all and mighty for once and actually act like a partner for Rinamon as she and boss fight? Unless you'd like to go out there and show her how it's done. He suggested sarcastically before backing off and disappearing in a puff of smoke. Visibly shaken, Rika unconsciously rubbed her neck where the kanai was before looking towards the real Naruto with anger and just a touch of fear. Crouching, she quickly scooped up the dropped card and ran it through the scanner of her digivis with a small flash of static. DG modify. Hyperspeed activate. At this point, both Naruto and Rinamon had mostly recovered, but had been more focused on the interaction between Rika and the Kageya bunch and Naruto had discreetly made to watch over her in case one of their attacks went astray than going back to fighting. But now, as Rinamon felt a surge of energy rush through her body as the effects activated, her focus immediately switched back to Naruto as she once again blurred out of sight. With her boosted speed, Rinamon was on top of Naruto in the blink of an eye with her fist held high. However much to her surprise, just before her fist could acquaint itself with his skull, the blonde's normal hand shot up and caught her wrist. Yeah, not getting me the same way twice, Naruto said before socking her snout. Head snapping back with a snarl, Rinamon caught Naruto of guard by using her still-grabbed hand as leverage to pull him close to herself. The fox Digimon then proceeded to wrap her arms and legs tightly around the blonde, pinning his arms to his sides and unbalancing him enough that they toppled over again. Give up, she said, using all of her strength to hold Naruto as he desperately tried to break free. However, instead of a look of annoyance or defeat, Rinamon was surprised at the sight of Naruto's wide grin. Before she could demand what he was smiling about though, she felt his furred palm press against her stomach and she just managed to see a familiar flash. DG modify. Naruto started as his hand was encased in a bright glow before morphing into a black and gray cannon. Armor activate. Enjoy your flight, he said cheekily as the cannon fired off a blast of concussive air that sent Rinamon flying off of the blonde and into the tree line. Standing up and dusting himself off, Naruto paused to watch in fascination as his hand turned back to normal. Well, at least that one works, he commented while putting the card he used away. He then flexed his reformed fingers in curiosity until he heard the soft thump of Rinamon landing back in the clearing. Looking towards her, he barely held back a snicker from not only numerous twigs and leaves now stuck in her fur, but also at the very angry bird pecking at her from its nest currently situated on top her head. Its assault didn't last long though as Rinamon simply flicked her head, launching both bird and nest into the air and landing perfectly in another tree, because she was just that good. DG Modify, Nightman's Holy Blade. Rika called out as a massive gold and gray buster sword formed in Rinamon's grasp and leaving Naruto blinking in shock. Huh, deja vu, was all he had time to think before bending almost 90 degrees backwards to avoid the horizontal slice. Oi, ain't this getting a little too extreme for a spar? He asked with a raised eyebrow, while dodging several slow but very powerful slashes. When he received no response besides a sudden stab that sliced into his side and came dangerously close to turning him into a shinobi kebab though, Naruto decided enough was enough. Dashing along the inside of the extended blade before Rinamon could recover from her overextension, he grabbed onto the guard with one hand and used the other to punch the fox Digimon in the face again. Then, when her grip slackened around the sword's handle, he pulled it free and promptly bashed her over the head with the flat of the blade. Rinamon groaned as the spots cleared from her vision, a hand rising to her aching head as she started to sit up, only to feel the sharp point of her own weapon dig lightly into her chest. 
Naruto stood over her with the Nightmon's sword pointed right at her and a stern expression on his face as he held his bleeding side. That went too far, he said coldly before stepping back and tossing the blade away. It ended up embedded into a tree just a few feet away from Rika, who was shaking slightly as she stared at Naruto's injury and dispersed back into harmless data. Without another word, Naruto turned away from them and marched away with a slight limp. Neither Rika or Rinamon tried to stop him as they were both caught up in their own thoughts at that moment. Rinamon was irritated with herself as in her excitement of the fight. She had reverted to her usual thought process during a battle and had instinctually gone for the kill. Rika on the other hand was caught on the fact that in her anger toward Naruto, she was almost the accomplice to a murder. Killing Digimon was one thing, they were just collections of data that were made for fighting, in her opinion at least, but Naruto was human, or mostly human. Just the thought of it, mixed with the sight of his injury and flashes from that night, ended up turning her stomach enough and before she knew it, the redhead found herself puking her guts out in a conveniently placed bush. With Naruto, the orange-loving blonde kept walking for several minutes, his anger towards Rika and Rinamon simmering down a tiny bit as the adrenaline in his system burned out. Unfortunately, this also meant the bleeding gash in his waist was really starting to hurt like a bitch, forcing him to stumble over to a nearby bench and sit down with a hiss. Careful to keep the pressure on the wound, Naruto fished around inside his jacket pockets before pulling out a small scroll with a green cord around it. Thanks, Bachan. He thought while opening it. Tsunade had sent this scroll to him via summon in the very likely case he ended up getting hurt somehow. With a quick application of chakra and a puff of smoke, he unsealed a large medkit and popped it open. Pulling out a few bandages and gauze, Naruto lifted his shirt and jacket up, exposing the slowly closing gash and started patching himself up. Due to his focus being solely on what he was doing however, the blonde was completely ignorant towards his surroundings, including the brunette woman that just walked into the area and was currently staring at him in shock. This woman was Nami Asaji, a teacher at Yodabashi Elementary School despite her hatred of teaching, who was skipping her own class as she had needed a break from those little bastards. Having thought a nice relaxing park would be just the thing she needed to unwind. She instead found herself watching as an unknown blonde boy about the same age as her students patched up a nasty-looking cut with the casualness of taking care of a small scrape. By the time she finally snapped out of her shock, Naruto had finished with the bandages and was putting everything away. It wasn't until he was just about to seal the kid away again when he heard someone calling out to him. Hey, are you okay? What happened? Nami asked with concern as she hurried over, his gaze snapping over to the woman. Naruto mentally smacked himself for being careless while also thankful that his jacket mostly hid his arm from sight. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Just had a small mishap while I was jogging, he said, using the first excuse that came to mind at the time. Nami looked at the boy skeptically. She dealt with enough kids to tell when one was lying to her, but decided to let it go for now since he didn't seem too badly hurt. And since he seemed well enough for the moment, she decided to ask another important question. All right. Then how about you explain to me what you're doing out of school, young man? She may hate teaching, but she sure didn't tolerate kids skipping school, even if that was supremely hypocritical of her at this point. As soon as the question left her lips, Naruto stiffened up and began sweating heavily. Crap, I forgot about that. Unlike Kanoha, kids his age still had to be in school in this place. Uh, well you see, er, he said nervously, cowering slightly under the Iruka-like stare the woman was giving him, thinking fast. Naruto pointed in a random direction and yelled. Look, a distraction, causing Nami to look away long enough for him to make a ram seal. Just as the teacher realized she'd been punked with one of the oldest tricks in the book, she found herself jumping in surprise as a sudden burst of smoke enveloped her. Coughing, she waved her hand to clear it and, as she expected, the boy was no longer around. Smoke bombs? Really? Great. Now I have to deal with a ninja wannabe. Nami groaned walking off to go and enjoy her, day off. If she had looked down, the brunette would have noticed a small blonde fox with blue eyes with a bandaged side looking up at her with mischievous glint in its eye as it followed her. Wannabe ninja am I? Nami sighed tiredly as she walked down the dull hallway, leading to her classroom. As much as she wanted to just skip the rest of the day, she did have a job to do. That and her excuse of having car trouble would only last for so long, especially since she walked to work. Stealing herself up for dealing with a bunch of noisy, ungrateful, inattentive kids, she opened the door and marched in, never noticing a small blonde blur shoot between her legs, shoot between the mini desk, and dart under her desk. Glancing across the room, 
Her eyebrow rose slightly at seeing the empty seats before glancing upwards to the clock on the wall and face bombed. Duh. Recess is still on another five minutes. She thought while walking towards the front of the classroom and flopping into her seat. Sorting through the notes left on her desk from the sub, a groan escaped her lips when all she found were numerous love letters from her associate Mori. Jesus, when will that thick-head fool ever understand that I'm not interested in him? I must have turned him down almost a thousand times at this point. She mentally grumbled while tossing the notes into the trash can. After a bit more searching, she finally found an actual account of what the class had been doing so far for the day and began reading it over carefully. While she was distracted though, a certain mischievous fox peeked out of the desk and silently snuck over to where she had set her purse down, carefully poking his snout inside. Naruto fished around the bag for several moments before pulling out Nami's wallet and slinking back to his hiding spot. A few seconds later, an almost unnoticeable puff of smoke emitted from under the desk and Naruto re-emerged, now with an orange collar around his neck with tags and a small makeshift bag on his unhurt side, dropping the wallet back where it belonged. Naruto quietly moved from desk to desk, fiddling around with the chairs for a few moments before moving on. By the time he was done, the bell had rung, and students were starting to slowly trickle in. On the way back to his hiding spot, however, Naruto was intercepted and scooped up by a girl with light brown hair and an odd dog-like puppet on her arm. Well, hello there. Who might you be? She asked with an adorable look of curiosity as she held Naruto up to eye level. Since he couldn't respond verbally for obvious reasons, Naruto simply barked in a cheerful way before licking the girl's face, making her giggle. He he he, friendly little guy aren't you? She said while petting his head. Jerry, Nami called out, startling the girl. Would you please take your seat so we may begin class, starting with you explaining why you have broken the rules and brought a pet to class. She said sternly while some of the other students snickered at the girl's misfortune. But Ms. Asagi, he isn't mine. I just found him when I walked in. Then find that furball's owner and return him to where he belongs. Nami said sternly, making Jerry pause for a moment before turning back to Naruto who intentionally wiggled his head in a way that drew attention to the collar around his neck, specifically the tag attached to the front. It worked as the odd girl adjusted her grip to a one-handed hold and grasped the small piece of metal. Reading it over, her eyes widened for a moment before narrowing as she pouted cutely. Walking up to the teacher's desk, she plopped the disguised boy on top of it. Here you go, back where he belongs, she said in a cheerful tone as Naruto scrambled over to the very confused teacher in joy and started licking her face. Blue, stupid makeup, Naruto thought with a hidden grimace, silently thankful when Nami finally regained her wits enough to pull him away and hold him at arm's length. What is the meaning of this, Jerry? She asked with both anger and confusion. Never dropping her cheerful smile, Jerry pointed to the tag still hanging from Naruto's collar. Well, Ms. Asagi, you said return him to his owner, and according to those that would be you. What? That's preposterous. The woman exclaimed while snapping her gaze to Naruto and reading the tags for herself, her eyes widening with each passing word. Fluffy Asagi. If lost, please contact or return to Nami Asagi. 321-123-4321-324 East Malarkey Street. Wah, but that. I've never seen this fox in my life. The woman stuttered out, her grip on the foxified blonde loosening due to her shock allowing Naruto to wiggle free. Instead of running off though, he decided to keep selling the act by scampering onto the woman's lap and settling down like he was going to take a nap. This in turn left poor Nami in quite the predicament. She would have demanded which of her students had made the fake tags, but with how friendly and attentive the fox was being with her it appeared, as if it had known her for a long time, she would likely just look like a fool. Wait a second extremely affection towards me, idiot. God damn it, Mori. She mentally grumbled, figuring this was his doing as an attempt to impress her. Sighing heavily, Nami scooped Naruto up into her arms as she stood up. Jerry, please take your seat. I'll deal with Dash. Click the teacher paused mid-sentence as she heard a soft clicking noise come from her seat the moment her rear end left its cushioned surface. Before she even finished registering the odd sound, Chaos erupted everywhere as every student's seat in the room suddenly blasted out glops of various colored neon paint or large clouds of colored smoke. It's several minutes to settle, but when it did, Nami and Jerry were greeted with the sight of the newly painted classroom. Many of the students had comical looks of shock on their faces, others had gotten up and were currently trying to get the colorful substances off of themselves, and the rest were trying to join them only to discover that their seats wanted to go with them. 
And it was thanks to this timely and very large distraction that nobody noticed as the disguised blonde escaped from Nami's grip, replace himself with a clone, place a piece of folded paper on her desk, and discreetly slink out of the room. It wouldn't be several more minutes until the teaching-hating teacher finally noticed the note, and upon reading its contents would come the closest to having an aneurysm she'd ever been. The first courtesy of Naruto Uzumaki, the not-so-wannabe ninja. Insert picture of Chibi Naruto doing a peace sign. Exiting the school, Fox Naruto ran into the nearest alleyway, and one puff of smoke later re-emerged as his normal self with a large cheeky smirk plastered across his face. Still got it. He said happily to himself before walking off in a random direction, no real destination in mind now that he had reaffirmed his ninjitude. Eventually though, after an hour or so of mindless wandering, the whiskered blonde grew bored and hungry. Using some pocket money that Rika's grandmother had given him and another quick application of a hinge to make himself look like a Ruka, he purchased some snacks from a convenience store before stopping at an old half-flooded drainage canal to eat. He watched several koi fish that had probably been illegally dumped there with mild intrigue as he munched on a small powdered donut. Are you going to just stand back there all day, or are you going to join me? He asked unexpectedly, not even flinching as Rinamon seemingly phased into existence beside him. How did you know I was here? The foxy Digimon asked, taking one of the sweet treats when he held the bag up for her. You're a six-foot-tall bright neon yellow fox with a vibrant snow-white chest and light purple arm sleeve things trying to hide in a shadow. How could I not have noticed you were around? Naruto asked back with a raised eyebrow, causing Rinamon to pause. That is actually a valid point. She admitted reluctantly, her natural colors weren't exactly all that incognito when she thought about it. Deciding to change the subject, she sat down next to him and stated, I figured you'd be a bit angrier at me for earlier. Oh, trust me, I'm still pissed as all hell, Naruto stated bluntly, earning himself a confused look from the from the fox Digimon before he continued. But, after thinking it over for a bit, I guess I also understand why you acted like you did somewhat. And how exactly would that be? Rinamon asked with genuine curiosity. When I saw your memories, all I saw was fighting, fighting, and even more fighting. Nothing else, he said while picking up a small stone from the ground and skipping it across the water. You were just following your instincts, doing what you've always done. Silence filled the area after that as the duo continued to munch on the sweet pastries. Naruto was simply enjoying his snack while imagining the various pranks he could continue to pull as a way to alleviate his boredom, while Rinamon was in deep thought as his words brought to mind a few things she had been thinking about. Can you tell me more about your teammate, the one who tried to kill you? Naruto choked on the donut he had he just bitten, coughing for several moments before he managed to dislodge the piece of powdered bread from his trachea. Cough, cough. Has anyone ever told you that you're a very straightforward person? He asked rhetorically between heavy breaths. Rinamon simply shrugged the comment off and waited patiently as Naruto regained his breath. Why do you even want to know about Sasuke anyway? Well, that answers one question, the fox Digimon thought with satisfaction, though her face gave nothing away. You mentioned him before and said that me and Rika were a lot alike to him. It made me curious. Looking her over suspiciously, Naruto considered what she said for a moment before nodding slowly in agreement. I guess that makes sense. He sighed slightly while looking to the water again. Sasuke is he's a team to put plainly. He was always brooding, acting all dark and cold towards everyone while obsessing over getting stronger. Me and him practically hated each other with me unable to stand his constant, holier-than-thou attitude and him believing that I nothing more than a distraction and dead weight. Naruto paused to take a drink. However, after a few missions, several fights, and more than one life or death situation, we developed a camaraderie between us. Sure, we still insulted each other and argued a lot, but over time it became less angry and more of us just kidding around in our own way. Naruto stopped again, his expression somber as memories of Kakashi's test, the wave mission, and finally the Chunin exams played in his mind. Unfortunately, all that meant nothing to him in the end when a certain snake offered him a chance for more power. He betrayed our home, ran off to join up with one of the worst criminals ever recorded, and then tried to kill me when I stopped him. You saw the end results. He emphasized his point by lifting his altered arm for her to see. Uh-huh, and how exactly do me and my tamer remind you of him? Rinamon asked. Naruto glanced at her, a sharp look in his eyes as they locked with hers. You both have the same thirst for power, he said before turning away. Be honest with me, if a much more powerful Digimon showed up and was willing to be Rika's partner, 
Do you really think she would hesitate to abandon you? Or that you wouldn't do the same if the positions were reversed? I thought as much. Naruto stated blandly as he stood up and dusted himself off. If we're done with our little chat, I'll be dash beep 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 on my way. He finished with a groan as the digivis in his hand started going off and a shiver ran up both blonde spines. Bioemergence. They said at the same time as an incredible thick cloud of fog burst into existence around them, making it almost impossible for either of them to see further than five feet. Back to back? Naruto asked, getting a nod of affirmation from Rinamon before they faced opposite directions with their backs pressed together. At first, nothing seemed to happen as not even a sound could be heard. But after a few seconds, a soft clicking noise started echoing out all around them. Well, well, what do we have here? To little morsels all bundled up for me to devour? Ah, it must be my birthday. A deep, crackling voice said as a large shadow flitted in and out of sight. Sorry to say, but we aren't on the menu today. Rinamon cracked back as she tried to track their opponent using their voice, not noticing as a long, curved, scythe-like blade slowly pierced through the mist on her left side. Look out. Thankfully though, Naruto did and pulled the unaware fox out of the way just as the weapon buried itself in the ground she had just been standing on. Crashing into the shallow water of the canal, both recovered in time to see the mist get blown away by a sudden gust of air to reveal a two-story tall gigantic green mantis like Digimon with two scythe or sickle-like blades for arms. It's a snimmon, be careful. These guys tend to be fast, powerful, and extremely hard-shelled. Rinamon muttered with mild alarm seeping into her voice. Even her diamond storm would be hard-pressed to break through its chitinous protection, and that was the strongest move in her admittedly very limited arsenal. No any weak spots? Unfortunately no, this would be my first time facing one of these things. Move! Rinamon yelled as the large Digimon charged at with a startling swiftness. She was forced to cartwheel out of the way of various slices while Naruto simply hopped back until he was out of range. Then let's make one. Kagabunshin no Jutsu. The whiskered teen cried as dozens of clouds of smoke formed around him. When it all cleared, over a dozen copies of the blonde were revealed, wide grins on their faces as they charged Snimmin with various battle cries. Meanwhile, the original stayed behind. His hand held out as another clone struck the air around it in various ways, much to Renamin's confusion. Said confusion quickly turned to mild awe as a blue ball of compressed, spiraling energy slowly came into cohesion in Naruto's grasp. Its job done, the clone dispelled with a salute as Naruto held up the finished product. Get ready. If this doesn't take it down right away, it should hopefully at least ring a few bells hard enough to keep the bug days long enough for you to find a way to squash it. He told her before joining the clone assault. Rinamon right behind him. You think these measly constructs will be enough to stop me? Snimmin howled as it effortlessly sliced through one clone after another as they got close. Unnoticed by the wild Digimon though was that each destroyed copy poofing into a large cloud of smoke that steadily filled the area, creating a smoke screen that prevented Snimmin from seeing the real threat till it was too late. Ras Angan. Naruto yelled as he fell from above, landing right on the mantis monster's head and ramming the sphere into the center of its red striped head. Aff. Snimmin screamed in agony as the deceptively powerful attack ground into its outer carapace like a drill, the chitin at the epicenter of the attack being quickly reduced to dust while spiderwebbing the rest surrounding it. Naruto was caught off guard though when the Rasengan suddenly collapsed down to the size of a marble in his hand before exploding outwards, launching him high into the air while smashing Snimmin deep into the concrete. Okay, that was new, Naruto thought aloud as he soared through the air before he noticed a shadow covering him. Spinning in the air, his eye widened as he found himself in a crash course for an odd two-spired building at high speed. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Hypnos building, women's bathing area. Aw, oh, that hits the spot. Riley said as she sank into the newly installed artificial hot spring with Tally. Still can't believe it was cheaper to have this put in than to add cushions to those lousy hollow chairs. It's mostly cause of the delicate circuitry and wiring running through them. And I may have adjusted the actual price slightly. The shy woman admitted, blushing slightly when Riley stared at her in surprise. Her embarrassment only grew when the ginger brunette pulled her into a hug with a laugh. Would you look at that, little Miss Goody Two-Shoes pulling off a little fraud. Oh, I'm so proud, Riley said while dramatically pretending to wipe a tear from her eye. Sniff, why do they grow up so fast? She asked rhetorically while intentionally ignoring Tally's struggling and quiet complaints. So focused on their little moment. 
Neither of them noticed the blonde flying towards them until crash shatter thud. Splush both women stood on end as they watched a stunned Naruto groggily stand up while spitting out a mouthful of water. Shaking his head a few times to clear the cobwebs, his eyes soon settled on the two nude women before him. Faster than Riley or Tally could blink, Naruto's face went from normal to bright tomato red and finally to pasty white as he slowly started to back up with his hands raised in a placating manner. Hee hee, I am so, so sorry. This was a total accident, I swear, he said nervously, his eyes focused solely on their faces to avoid possibly angering them further before bolting out the hole he just made as fast as possible. Please don't kill me. As luck would have it though, anger was the last thing on either of the women's mind. Poor Tally had passed out from sheer embarrassment the second he had vanished, but Riley, she had a look of contemplation on her face. His reaction was so, fearful. Why would he be so scared of two civilian women with how strong he is? Ugh, great. Even more questions to deal with. Reaching over to a pair of towels folded up nearby, the woman shook her friend back to consciousness before the both of them quickly covered themselves up and headed for the changing rooms. But not before taking one last look at the destroyed window and thinking the exact same thing. I am so not paying for that. Back at the canal. Enjoy your flight? Rinamon asked with a smirk when Naruto landed back at the fight zone. Ha ha, very funny, Naruto said back in a dry tone as he brushed off a few remaining bits of glass off his shoulder, his cheeks still a hint red from his little encounter. Surprised you haven't uploaded that data yet? Not up to your tastes or something? He asked while gesturing to the floating red particles floating where Snimmin used to be. No, this data is yours. You were the one to best Snimmin after all, not me, she said back, catching Naruto by surprise. Uh, okay then, thanks he said somewhat awkwardly while walking up to the cloud of data. As soon as she got close, the little red lights instantly drew towards him and began seeping into his body, causing a moderate rush of energy run through his body as it did. Just as he was finishing up, however, a small cluster of the data broke off from the rest and soaked into the digivis in his hand instead. A few seconds later, the machine beeped twice and spat out a small sphere of light that quickly took the form of a Digimon card? Hmm. Rika hummed in thought as she carefully looked over the card Naruto had gotten. As annoyed at her as he was, she was also the only person Naruto could ask about these kinds of things, and Rinamon had pointed out that blindly swiping it probably wouldn't be the best idea. It's an equipment card, but I've never heard of this one before. Closest would be my Snimmin's twin sickle, and that's an attack card, she said while handing the card back to Naruto and pulling out her own to show him. It would make sense that you haven't, since it was made in such an unusual fashion. Rinamon said, having informed Rika on the circumstances to the card's creation. Though that also means we have no idea how it will react when scans still. Well then, guess that means there's only one way left to find out then. Naruto said while holding up his foxified arm and swiping the card through the digivis as Rika and Rinamon stepped back just in case. DG modify, snim and scythe activate. The second the card finished passing through the scanner, a small burst of glowing white data shot from the gadget and quickly condensed around Naruto's hands. After a brief flash of light, Naruto was revealed to be holding a long green pole with red marking running along it and a large, jagged blade identical to one of Snimmin's claws on the top end. Sweet! Naruto exclaimed with a grin, twirling the weapon a few times with one hand and creating large gashes in the ground beneath him as the blade effortlessly sliced through the soil. This thing is badass! He flowed this statement with several practice swings, which ended with him accidentally slicing a bird bath in half. Oops! Oi, easy with that, grandma will have our heads if you destroy the yard, Rika yelled, rolling her eyes in exasperation when she got a sheepish grin in response. Now get rid of that thing and come here, I have an idea, she muttered while glancing between him, his arm, and Rinamon. Curious what she was thinking, Naruto allowed the deadly weapon to disperse in his grip while he approached the redhead and fox Digimon. What you have in mind? He asked while tilting his head. Give me your hand for a second. I want to test something out, she said vaguely, making Naruto a bit nervous, but complied nonetheless and cautiously held out his digital arm. Rinamon, come here, Rika said to her partner while grabbing Naruto's wrist. Also wondering where the girl was going with this, Rinamon stepped closer, just for Rika to stick Naruto's palm onto her fur-covered chest. The sheer surprise and randomness of the redhead's action left both blondes completely stunned only made worse when Naruto's hand instinctually closed upon contact around something soft and squishy making Rinamon squeak. Once the shock wore off, 
Naruto's face turned completely crimson. Rika gained a light blush of her own, and the fur on Rinnaman's tail and arms stood on end. Before any of them could react further than that, Naruto's digivis lit up and beeped a few times. Digital core detected. Commencing data scan. A metallic female voice set as a pulse of light went through Rinnaman's body in a grid pattern. As soon as it covered every inch of her, the fox Digimon's body went translucent and a small blue sphere was revealed floating within her chest that released several small tendrils extended from it, coiled around Naruto's hand, and soaked into the Digivis. After a few seconds of this passed, the strands broke off and Rinamon returned to normal while stumbling back with a grunt as a hand rose to her chest. I feel violated, she muttered softly with a shiver and sent a sidelong glare at Rika. Scan complete. Ping complimentary data detected. Would you like to integrate? The voice asked while two cards formed into Naruto's now free hand, Renamon's power paw and Renamon's diamond storm. Um, integrate. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, not recognizing the word. Integration confirmed, processing. After saying this, the device released a sudden bright flash of light, blinded all three of them. Once it cleared, it revealed. Nothing? Not a single thing had apparently happened as Naruto, Rika, and Rinamon stood there with confused expressions on their faces. Integration complete. Updating next recharge cycle. You know, I actually feel kind of let down. Naruto mumbled while looking himself over before turning his gaze to Rika with a mild glare. Mind telling us what that was all about? Said girl snapped out of her mild stupor and huffed slightly before turning away. I figured that since you could make cards from defeated Digimon, perhaps you could do the same thing with others by being in direct prolonged contact with them. And it had to be on my chest? Rinamon asked with a minutely twitching eyebrow. Oh, don't be such a big baby about it. How was I supposed to know you had boobs under all that fluff? Rika asked back in a snarky tone while pointing to the small mane of fur covering Rinamon's chest, though she refused to make direct eye contact with the Digimon. Besides, it worked and that's all that matters. But how? Naruto asked, getting both of their attention. I mean, during our spar, and when I first got my new arm we were in contact for much longer than that. So why didn't it happen then? You know what? Why am I even asking? It's obvious none of us know what's going on anymore. Like we even had before. The whiskered blonde said in exasperation before marching into the house. I'm going to go take a nap. All this crazy crap is exhausting. That and it was 10 o'clock at night, but who was keeping track? I'm with him on this one. Rinamon said while also heading inside. Maybe I should have just stayed in the digital world. At least then all I had to deal with was figuring out who to fight next. What next? Some overly emotional brat somehow makes a Digimon. Meanwhile, whoa. A brown-haired boy in his pajamas exclaimed as the doodles of a red dinosaur-looking creature were scanned through a red and white D-arc. Naruto and Rinamon's room. Naruto groaned tiredly as he flopped onto his bed, emotionally exhausted from the day. He grunted in mild annoyance when light flooded into the room briefly as Rinamon entered the room before snuggling his face deeper into his pillow. Curling up onto her own bed, the fox Digimon closed her eyes and was just about to drift off when a soft mumbling and whimpering made her ears twitch. Partially opening one eye, she found the source to be coming from her roommate. Would you keep it down? You're not the only one trying to sleep in here. When the noise kept going for several more minutes, her eyebrow started twitching again as she slowly got up and marched over to Naruto's side of the room with her now, flaming paw held up ominously. However, just as she got above him to give him a good, thrashing the fox Digimon stopped cold as she got a good look at the sleeping blonde. Naruto was lying in his bed as he tossed and turned, his entire body shaking slightly and sweat poured from his forehead. The more shocking part, however, was with his normal arm, or to be more precise, his once normal arm. Gold and white fur was steadily sprouting up his arm while his nails grew into wicked-looking claws. At the same time, digital energy was slowly leaking from his digivis and collecting around both arms turning into orange cloth, around his ears which were moving upwards and becoming pointed if her eyes weren't deceiving her, and finally around his backside where something was forming if the rapidly growing lump inside the back of his pants was any indication. Having a strong suspicion on what it was, Rinamon reached down and gently sliced through the fabric with one of her claws, allowing a large bundle of gold and white fur to spring free. As soon as the still-forming tail popped free, Naruto instantly settled down as the tension in his body dissipated. Her job done, the fox Digimon started to get up and head back to her own bed, because she had had enough insanity to deal with for a lifetime and would deal with this shit in the morning, when a familiar shiver ran up her spine. Sovereign damn it. 
She muttered while heading out of her room to see a slightly groggy Rika with her digivis held up in the hallway. Let's just get this over with. The next morning, Rumiko was humming happily to herself as she prepared breakfast for her daughter and her two house guests. She had been in a wonderful mood since she had managed to get a few days off work with Naruto's help. How exactly? You may ask. Well, modeling company. All right then, Ms. Nanaka. You and the new girl were just perfect. Take 20 to refresh yourselves. A man yelled from his fold-up chair through a megaphone while several other people rushed around him with different lights, props, and camera equipment. Oh, thank Kami, a sultrily dressed Amis. Nanaka muttered as she slowly waddled off the set and flopped down into a nearby chair. My feet are killing me. How do women put up with these things? She muttered while glaring at the pair of ruby-colored heels she wore. Beats me said an 18-year-old looking girl with long blonde hair put up in pigtails and two whisker marks on each cheek, wearing an equally sexy outfit as she sat down next to him. Nanaka? Rumiko-chan owes boss big time for this. Definitely to Bayo. And back. It had only been a day, and people around the world were already going crazy over Rumiko's apprentice, Naruko. The idea had come to her the other day when she happened to see Naruto, testing out his Kage Bunshin and hinge in the backyard before his spar with Rinamon and all she had to do to convince him was bribe him with a few slates of instant ramen. Though to be fair, she was also going to put the money that Naruko was earning into a separate bank account and give all access for it to Naruto once the card and information arrived in the mail. Oh, he will certainly be surprised with that. She thought with a giggle while putting the finished plates on the table. Aha! The model jumped in fright as a horrified yell rang out throughout the house, followed by a heavy thump. Wondering what happened, the concerned mother rushed down the hallway and towards the guest room where a shocked Rika was standing by the open doorway with her jaw hanging open. Peering inside herself, Rumiko quickly mimicked her daughter's expression when she saw the cause. You have got to be kidding me. Naruto yelled as he alternated from glaring at his newly transformed arm to the long fluffy appendage now sticking out his backside, the fox ears now on his head twitching rapidly. The final addition was a pair of arm sleeves similar to Renamon's only more glove-like and bright orange, while instead of an inyang symbol, there was a red spiral was on the back of one and the digivis sticking out the other. What the hell caused this to happen? Most likely that data integration you did yesterday, Renamon casually said from her corner of the room where she was calmly brushing the fur of her tail like nothing was wrong. Your digivis did say it would update during your next recharge cycle which my guess sleeping would be the equivalent to since it started shortly after you fell asleep. And you didn't tell me? Rika demanded, snapping out from her stupor when she heard the Fox Digimon statement. It was almost midnight, and I was tired from fighting that Lynxmon we went after. Rinamon stated without looking up from her work. Rika opened her mouth to say something, most likely to tell off her partner, when a wrinkled hand suddenly reached out and grabbed her by the ear, making her yelp in pain. What's this I hear about you being out way past your bedtime? Seiko asked in an ominous tone as she stared down at her squirming granddaughter. It was at that moment Rika knew. She messed up. This is humiliating, Rika grumbled. Eyes locked on the walls in front of her in annoyance as her nose scrunched up from the smell of the paint. After a long lecture about sneaking out of the house at night, Seiko grounded the redhead for the rest of the day and as an added bonus, had the girl stand in the corner in the dining room for time out. She was almost thirteen for crying out loud. Well then, Maybe you'll think twice before pulling that kind of stun again, Seiko said from a chair, directly behind the girl with a flyswatter in hand. Besides, I'm pretty sure he has it worse than you right now. She muttered under her breath, while glancing over her shoulder. Could you please stop? Naruto asked with a disgruntled expression, as he slipped the orange sleeves back on. The cause of his discomfort was Rika's mother, who was currently grooming his new tail after finishing doing the same to his arms. Not till I'm done. Rumiko said in a surprisingly stern voice, as she lightly dampened the section she was working on with a few sprays of a bottle of moisturizing hair stylizer before running a large brush through the thick fur. One should always take proper care of themselves after all. But this feels really weird. Naruto's voice slightly hitched as she passed over a particularly sensitive spot, sending a strong tingling sensation up his spine. Your brain is just getting used to the unknown readings of the new nerves connected to it. You'll get used to it. Rinamon said from the other side of the table, casually drinking a cup of tea with a mildly bored expression. Eventually. If you say so, Naruto grumbled, trying and failing to repress a shiver as Rumiko hit the same spot again. And how did you even know that anyway? Giving the boy a dull look, the anthro fox pointed towards herself and said in a completely blank voice. 
Have you forgotten what I am exactly? Digimon go through what you're experiencing every time we digivolve to a higher stage the first time. Oh, right. Naruto had the decency to look sheepish at her words, if only for a moment before turning to relief as Rumiko finished with his tail and let the fluffy and now glimmering appendage go. Sadly though, it was short-lived as while he was getting up, the model grabbed the back of his shirt and pulled him back, causing him to flop down in front of her with his head settled between her thighs. Where do you think you're going? We're not done yet she said with her brush held up while running a finger over one of Naruto's fox ears, making him freeze up. Seeing what the woman was doing, Rinamon tensed up slightly for a few seconds before clearing her throat intentionally loudly. I would advise you not to do that, Rumiko-san. Those are most likely as sensitive as mine, and he will need some time to adjust first. Oh, relax, dear. I doubt it will be that bad, Rumiko said while continuing to mess around with the blonde scalp. Besides, I'll be done in a emo per mint. She finished with a slack jaw as Naruto went slack in her arms, and a deep rumbling sound echoed within his chest. Silence filled the room as everyone stared at the whiskered boy, minus Rika who was swatted across the back of the head when she tried. Her intrigue peaked. Rumiko set her hand on the top of Naruto's scalp right between the two fox ears and started gently scratching. Her. Kawaii. She exclaimed with a starry expression as the rumbling grew louder hugging the poor boy tightly while continuing to mess around with his ears. Stop! Naruto begged weakly, barely able to think as the overwhelming plethora of sensations washed through him like a tsunami. It also didn't help that he was instinctually leaning towards the source of these feelings. Now I don't feel so bad. Rika thought with a snicker, not even minding the sweat she got for it as she was glad that she wasn't the only one that had to suffer now. Naruto's torment would continue for a whole ten minutes, which felt like an eternity for him, until Rinamon finally took pity on him enough to help. Okay, fine, she was just bored of sitting around and figured she might as well help him while she was leaving. Standing up, she walked over to the pair in silence, and with a single smooth motion grabbed her fellow blonde by the collar and pulled him free of Rumiko's grasp before the model even realized what was happening. I'm going, he's coming with me, she said bluntly while hoisting Naruto's still dazed form over her shoulder and vanishing in a blur. Ah, uh, I still wanted to pet him. Rumiko pouted cutely. I'm sure you'll have another chance eventually, Seiko said to her daughter while standing up and walking to the living room. But think of it this way, now you two can spend some quality time together. Taking this as her K, Rika finally stepped away from the corner and turned around, only to sweat drop as her mother stood right in front of her with a very happy expression. To the spa. The mother declared while scooping Rika up in her arms and charging towards the front door. I miss my corner. Park. Rinamon appeared in the same clearing that she and Naruto had sparred in before and promptly dropped her cargo on the ground with a muffled thump and a yelp. Ow, was that necessary? Naruto asked as he rubbed his sore rear, having landed right on his literal tailbone. No, but it was amusing. Rinamon admitted with a tiny smirk. Smartest. Naruto grumbled as he stretched a bit and took in his surroundings. Why are we back here again? Getting you adjusted. Rinamon said while backing up to the middle of the clearing and making a come-hither motion with her hand, which looked rather odd since she only has three fingers. Attack me and you'll see what I mean. Uh, alright, just don't actually try to kill me this time, Naruto said before charging at her, and almost immediately fell flat on his face after his second step. Ow! Slowly lifting his head up, he spat out a mouthful of dirt and grass while shanking the end of his tail off his face. What the hell just happened? Noticing a shadow covering him, he slowly looked up to see Rinamon towering over him, that small smirk still on her lips. Isn't it obvious? She asked, laughing internally when all she got in response was an annoyed glare. Rolling her eyes at him, she crouched in front of him and grabbed onto his tail and gave it a small tug. Your natural sense of balance is ask you thanks to this and these. She flicked one of his ears. Unlike when you regrew your arm, these aren't naturally part of your body. Thus you aren't able to cope with both the added weight and sensory input. Huh. Naruto asked with a confused tilt of his head while Rinamon face-bombed. You aren't used to having a tail and such sensitive ears, so it's messing up your balance. She said bluntly while pulling him back up to his feet. Now try that again. She said sternly while going back to her original position. Meanwhile, unnoticed to either of the blondes, a small camera barely the size of a marble focused in on the duo from its hiding spot within the knot of a tree. Hypnos building, main computer room, 
Silence filled the large domed room as Riley and Tally were sat in their chairs with their helmets off and dumbfounded expressions on their faces as they watched the live feed playing on the domed screen. Below them, Mitsu was in a similar state, his shock being so great that he squeezed the lighter in his hand so hard that the lid broke off and his fingers made dents in the metal. However, neither of these reactions were nearly as important as the one of Ramirez Darelight whose eyes held a combination of fear and desire as he watched Rinamon help Naruto get used to his new features. He had been in the middle of finishing his review of Hypnos's new side project when the feed had popped up, revealing Anomaly and his new look. I want that boy, no? That thing detained and in an examination room by the end of the day, he said, jabbing a finger at the whiskered blonde as he struggled to keep from falling over as he fought. No matter what, before any of his subordinates could say anything in response, the man turned around and marched away, intent on notifying the rest of the chairman about his discovery. You heard him. Get the capture teams prepped and ready, Mitsu said as he flopped down into a swivel chair in the corner, glancing down at his mangled lighter before tossing it into a nearby trash can. We move tonight after getting as much data as we can on subject Anomaly's new status. Clearly disturbed on what they were told to do, Riley and Tally reluctantly put their helmets back on and began typing away. Yes, sir. On it, sir. Back at the park, a few hours later. Huh. Huh. Naruto's breaths were long and ragged as sweat dripped from his forehead. Various parts of his body had minor burns, scrapes, and scratches while his clothes were covered in dirt and grass stains. Despite this, he had a big grin on his face and a wagging tail as he raised his fists, both alight with vibrant blue fire. Across from him, Rinamon was in a similar state, flaming fists and all. Amazing. He's already got power paw down pretty well, she thought with hidden awe. Naruto had accidentally used the flaming attack about half an hour into the impromptu training session, and with only a bit of help from Rinamon had figured out how to conjure it up at will. That's enough for now, you seem to have gotten things down for now, she said while allowing her attack to dissipate. Ah oh man, and I was just starting to win. Naruto grumbled as he dropped his arms and dusted himself off a bit. Sure you were. Rinamon said in a condescending tone that Naruto huffed at even though mentally she was agreeing with him, hence the other reason she was stopping now while she was ahead. She would like to retain at least some of her pride thank you very much. Naruto was about to retort, but she vanished to go look for a Digimon to fight, leaving him grumbling to himself about stupid smartest foxes as he left as well. As he went behind a particularly large tree, a puff of smoke engulfed his form and when it cleared he was back in his fox form. Time to go see how Nami-chan is doing. Following the path he went while tailing the teacher, he soon arrived at the outskirts of the school grounds, many plans forming in his mind of what he would do to keep himself entertained when he stopped due to a very interesting sight. All the students and staff of the school were currently outside, watching an elderly-looking man in a suit get dragged away by a pair of officers while rambling about dinosaurs inside the school. Huh, sounds like that guy had a run-in with a Digimon. Better go check it OU, what the... Naruto was cut off mid-thought as a pair of hands wrapped around his torso and picked him up, craning his head back to see who did it. Naruto relaxed when he found that it was that girl with the odd puppet, Jerry if he recalled right. What are you doing here fluffy Kuen? Ms. Asagi said she left you at home today. Jerry said with a tilted head as she cradled Naruto into her arms. Oh yeah, I forgot I left a shadow clone in my place. Guess it hasn't dispelled yet. Naruto thought as he licked the girl's cheek, making her giggle. I wonder how it's doing now. Nami's apartment. Ah, this is the life. Clone Fox Naruto thought as he gnawed on a chunk of smoked roast while lying down in a large plush dog bed and watching cartoons. And back. Meh, probably bored out of its mind. Naruto thought before his head snapped to the side when he spotted something big, red, and definitely not human vanish around a corner near the back of the school in his peripherals. Noticing his reaction, Jerry followed the small fox's gaze, she was just in time to see one of her classmates Takato also go around that corner. What's Takato doing over there? She wondered aloud, getting several yips from Naruto in response as he tried to get out of the odd girl's grasp without accidentally hurting her. You want to follow him? Naruto responded with a slight nod of his head while yipping several more times which made Jerry smile. All right then, let's go after him. She said cheerfully as she gave chase missing the face paw that Naruto did as they went. Naruto and Jerry stayed as quiet as possible as the girl peered around the corner to see Takato, holding a red and white dinosaur-looking Digimon with a black, hazard sign on its chest around the neck, while talking to an unknown blue-haired boy with a white and green rabbit Digimon sitting on top of his head. 
Takato, was it? I get that you're new to this and everything, but I don't think bringing your friend there to school was a very bright idea. The unknown boy said in calm, but slightly condescending tone that got Takato to look down in shame. Yeah, I really doubt that people would buy him being a stuffed animal like me. The Digimon on the boy's head said jokingly, before yelping as his ride gave him a pointed look. Now's not the time for your jokes, Terriermon. Momente Henry. You take it easy. The now named Henry said with a roll of his eyes before turning back to Takato. Anyway, you should really get out of here before someone else dash. What's his problem? Terriermon suddenly cut in with a tilted head. His question was directed towards the still unnamed Dino Digimon, who had started growling angrily out of the blue while swiveling his head towards where Naruto and Jerry were hidden, accidentally tossing Takato off in the prachis. Understandable unnerved by this, Jerry tried to back away quietly, only for the ever-dreaded plot device that brought woe and misery to many a person to strike. A.K.A. that small stick on the ground you always just happen to step on. Snap. Startled by the sudden breaking sound, the odd girl involuntarily gasped and fell to the ground before the four. This in turn set off the Digimon as it growled even louder while its mouth started glowing red. Gilman, stop. Takato yelled while trying to grab the red Dino again. Pyrosphere. Sadly, his attempt ended in failure as Gilman opened his mouth wide and fired a ball of compressed red fire straight at Jerry and Naruto. Seeing the imminent threat approaching, Naruto swore mentally as he finally managed to break out of Jerry's iron grip, thanks to her behind frozen in terror, and dispelled his transformation a split second before the attack hit. Jerry! Takato screamed out in worry as he saw his classmate, and not-so-secret crush, get engulfed in a burst of fire and smoke. Shoving the Digimon in his arms to the side, he started to rush over, only to come skidding to a halt as the dust started to clear. Instead of seeing the girl badly hurt or possibly even dead, like he was expected, the goggle-wearing boy was met with the sight of Naruto crouched in front of her with his now-scorched arms held out in a protective manner. His tail was resting over Jerry's quaking form, acting a second layer of defense as it stopped any dirt and debris that were tossed around from the blast from hitting her. Slowly getting up, Naruto hissed as the burns covering his arms stung, though he could already feel them starting to heal. Turning back to the girl he saved, he lifted his tail up to reveal her shaking a bit, but otherwise unharmed. Assured that she was all right, the foxy blonde turned his attention back to the others with his eyes narrowing dangerously. Mind me asking just what the heck that was about? He asked in a dangerously quiet tone that immediately put the two boys and rabbit Digimon on edge while Gilman continued to growl. I'm so sorry. Gilman only just hatched recently, and he hasn't got his instincts under control. Takato said nervously with his hands held up in a placating manner. Holy cow, this guy's scary. Henry, however, while equally unnerved, was able to keep his cool long enough to think somewhat coherently. Must be that girl's partner. Hopefully we can resolve this peacefully. He thought while looking from the unknown Digimon that had just appeared to the girl he was protecting. These thoughts were sent crashing to the ground, however, as Gilman apparently got tired of standing around and charged at Naruto with his claws covered in a menacing purple glow. Rock Briu GH. Unfortunately for the Dino, Naruto was ready for him this time, and before he got more than halfway was quite literally punted out of the area when Naruto appeared in front of him with a rising kick. Not wasting time after that, Naruto returned to Jerry's side and carefully scooped her up into a bridal carry and turning to leave. I'll take you on your word this time, but if he isn't under control soon I will end him myself, he said before hopping high into the air and out of sight. As soon as he was gone, Takato fell to the ground with a shaky sigh. Oh God, oh God, he muttered before fainting from mental exhaustion. Seeing this, Henry sighed before kneeling beside the boy and fishing around in his pockets until he pulled out a cell phone. Flipping it open, he quickly went through the contacts until he found one labeled, Mom, and hitting call. Hello, is this Takato's mother? Yeah. Sorry to startle you ma'am, but I kaye to inform you that your son had a near miss with a car just a second ago. No, he's fine. Just passed out from the scare. Okay, we'll be waiting at the school for you. He said before hanging up. Really, Henry? Almost hit by a car? Terriermon asked with a mixture of humor and confusion. What? I couldn't exactly say, hey. You son's Digimon almost roasted his classmate. Touche. Now, come on. We better find a place for this guy to hide before she gets here. Henry said while pointing to a dirt-covered Gilman as he wandered back and started poking Takato's passed-out form with his snout. Had any of them been more aware of their surroundings as they left? 
they would have seen Rinamon perched in a tree with a dull look on her face. Nope, not worth it. She thought to herself before turning around and leaving. She knew if she tried to delete those two Digimon, Naruto would find out somehow. And dealing with him being pissed at her was not worth the small amount of data those two rookies would give her. Back with Naruto and Jerry, the blonde had gotten a decent distance away from the scene of the incident before silently dropping into an alley. His arms had already fully healed by this time, with only a few bald spots remaining that were quickly filling back up. Hey, he said while gently shaking her a little, getting the shaking girl in her arms to look up at him. Are you alright? Jerry opened her mouth to speak. But no words came out so she simply nodded her head weakly. Good, I'm going to put you down now, he said, adjusting his grip until her feet settled onto the ground. Slowly removing his arms away, Naruto was ready to catch her at a moment's notice if it looked like she would fall over again. It was unnecessary thankfully, as other than a bit of wobbliness, Jerry managed to stand on her own and once she got a firmer feel of her balance, promptly turned around and hugged the boy tightly around the chest. Thank you Fluffy, she said, her voice muffled by his shirt while her eyes teared up slightly. No problem, Naruto said with a small grin as he rubbed the girl's head the same way Iruka would his whenever he had been upset. He would have corrected her on the name, but she was clearly still very fragile at the moment so let it slide. Once she was able to settle down a little, she reluctantly pulled away from him and flushed a bit in embarrassment when she saw the snot and tear stains she'd left. Sorry, she muttered while trying to wipe her nose. It's fine, he said, waving her apology off with a shrug before placing a hand on her shoulder comfortingly. You had a pretty close call back there. It's only natural to be a bit shaken. As he spoke, Naruto ruffled Jerry's hair a bit while looking at the sky. Speaking of which, why don't I take you home? It's starting to get late and your family is probably worried. Following his gaze, Jerry was surprised to see the sun was getting pretty close to the horizon. Yeah, worried, she muttered, her usual chipper tone gaining a tint of sadness to it that Naruto would have missed if it wasn't for his recently enhanced hearing. Filing the oddity for later, Naruto picked Jerry back up, flipped her onto his back, and grabbed her legs while his tail wrapped around both their waists like a belt. Hold on tight, he told her while tensing his legs intentionally slow having learned from Rika to give newbies fair warning. Quickly realizing what he was about to do, Jerry clung tightly to the boy's neck just as he leapt straight into the air and landed on the roof of the building nine stories above them. Now, which way to your place? He asked while walking to the opposite edge of the rooftop so that they had an almost unbroken view of the entire city. Heart pounding a bit from the brief flight, Jerry shook her head and pointed to the east. My house is that way, in Shibuya. With a destination set, Naruto double-checked his grip on his passenger before leaping to another building. With her mind no longer completely blocked up with fear, Jerry felt amazement flow through her as she soared high over the streets of Shinjuku. The people below her were barely visible specks, while the cars looked like the toys her half-brother played with. It was only made more exhilarating by the constant rising and falling as Naruto leapt from rooftop to rooftop. She was so lost into the feeling, she didn't even realize it was over until she suddenly felt her feet touch the ground again outside her home and saw Naruto standing in front of her with a worried expression. Hey, you alright? Naruto asked with a tilted head. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. It's just, that was amazing. She said breathlessly with a large smile as she held a hand to her chest. Seeing this, Naruto chuckled while moving to her side and patting her back. Yeah, the first times can be a bit wowing. That's an understatement the odd girl said, taking a few deep breaths to slow down her racing pulse before turning a little somber. I wish I could do that again. And who says you can't? Naruto asked with a smirk, making her perk up as he put a slip of paper with Rika's home address in her hand. All you have to do is come by and ask. Really? She asked softly, smiling brightly when she got a nod in response from the vulpine blonde as he turned around to leave. Then see you soon. Pausing just outside an ally, Naruto looked back at her with his trademark foxy grin. Seen you soon, he said, then vanished around the corner. Having almost completely forgotten the horrible experience that she had gone through for the moment thanks to the adrenaline rush, Jerry quickly pocketed the address and skipped to her door with a spring in her step. In her excitement, the girl missed her stepmother's face peering out the window with a shocked expression. Well, that was certainly an interesting experience. Naruto thought as he dropped back into the streets of Shinjuku and hid his vulpine features with a quick hinge, though did nothing to hide the big smile on his face. Time to get some ramen. He'd made a new friend today, 
and that was always cause for celebration to him. However, as he walked Naruto couldn't help but raise an eyebrow in curiosity as the amount of people around him began to lessen a lot as he went. He would have shrugged it off as it getting late, but he'd gone through this part of town enough times to learn the basic patterns of traffic, and unless he was mistaken it should be the beginning of rush hour. Just as he came to this realization, Naruto's ears heard a low-pitched whistling that was getting closer. Acting on reflex, Naruto spun around and dodged out of the way as a small red and gray blur shot past where he was. That turned out to be a decoy though as another blur zipped in while he was moving and struck into his side, causing his hinge to dispel. Stumbling a bit from the impact, the blonde managed to steady himself after a second and glanced down to see a tranquilizer dart that he swiftly pulled out. It was pointless though as Naruto could already feel the effects kicking in and his vision blurred slightly. Pushing past this, he dodged out of the way of six more darts while dozens of men dressed in riot gear and a few helicopters flooded into the area. Crap, need to even the odds. Naruto thought as he raised his hands up to make shadow clones only to be forced to abort the attempt in favor of dodging as a literal wave of trank rounds fired at him. Statistics weren't on his side though as the sheer amount of them and the multitude of directions they were coming from made it impossible for him to dodge them all and ended up getting hit several times on his arms, legs, and chest. With each successful shot, Naruto's vision rapidly became more distorted and his movement sluggish. When the firing finally stopped, he had been hit at least 40 times and could barely see straight. Stumbling around in a drunken-like daze, he resorted to swinging blindly whenever one of the dark shapes that represented the men attacking him appeared to get too close. It worked somewhat as he managed to hit several of them pretty hard before feeling something wrap around his right arm. As he tried to pull himself free, Naruto's other hand was bound, and he was jabbed in several places by smaller darts with cords attached that shocked him. Unfortunately for the people attacking him, however, Naruto had been zapped by a lot worse and retaliated by igniting his hands aflame, thus burning his bindings off and striking out wildly as the cries of surprise and pain reached his ears. The small victory wasn't to last though as the flames around his hand flickered out as he couldn't concentrate on maintaining them. Not even a second after that, something hard and heavy struck him across the face, knocking him off his feet and crashing to the ground where he was promptly dogpiled by the remaining men. Who are you people? Why are you attacking me? Naruto demanded as he struggled to get loose. His question remained unanswered though as a blurry figure dressed in white appeared in his view and jabbed something into his neck, making everything go black. Hmm, looks like you guys are competent at something after all, Ramirez Darelight said in a complimentary yet condescending tone. He stood in the main chamber with Mitsu, watching a feed of Naruto's unconscious form being restrained to a study table by a team of scientists and doctors. Congratulations on a job well done grinding his teeth slightly at being talked down to. Mitsu quietly took a few deep breaths to calm himself down. Thank you, sir, he said, grimacing slightly as one doctor carefully cut off a quarter-sized piece of skin from the blonde's hand. With everything we will learn from this thing, no Digimon will ever be a threat to our world ever again, Darelight said with a victorious gleam in his eyes. Excuse me, if I may, Riley cut in as her chair lowered to the ground. But how do you expect us to keep him contained? She asked after unhooking herself, putting extra emphasis on calling Naruto him not it. What a preposterous question, the man said with a roll of his eyes. Just keep it sedated. It can't cause trouble if it's unconscious. And how the hell do you expect us to do that, sir? Riley demanded, causing Darelight to do a double take at her outburst. It took almost 80 doses of whale tranquilizer and half of our men getting put in the ICU just to knock him out long enough to bring here. At the current rate, either we'll run out of sedatives they'll stop working altogether, or he'll die from overdose by the morning. This actually managed to get the man to pause slightly before raising his hand up to his chin in thought. You bring up a fair point, Otori-san. I guess we'll just have to follow the regular procedure then, Darelight said, making Mitsu and Riley, also Tally who was above them in her chair still, freeze. Shaking his head slightly in disbelief, Mitsu lifted his sunglasses to reveal his shocked dark brown eyes. Sir, you don't actually mean... Collect all the data you can about anomaly then eliminate the subject, Darelight said calmly before looking towards Mitsu with a raised eyebrow. What's wrong Yamaki-san? Don't tell me you're getting squeamish, you've done the same at least half a dozen times already. On Wild Ones, sir. This is a child. Was a child? Darelight cut him off. Just look at that thing. Can you honestly say that that creature is a child anymore? He asked while sending a sidelong glance at Naruto, just as a large needle was stabbed into the boy's back for a spinal tap. 
When he was met with silence, he took that as his victory and headed for the exit. I expect a full report on my desk by Thursday, he said over his shoulder before the door slammed shut behind him. Complete and total asshole, Riley said as soon as she was certain the man was truly gone. We aren't really going to kill a kid, right? She asked before glancing at Mitsu when she met with silence, only to see him leaving as well. Where are you going? To a bar. Answer my question first. I already did. If you walk out that door then you can say goodbye to your birthday night special. Click. That son of a bitch, Riley muttered while heading back to her chair and practically slamming the headset on and typing at her keyboard so harshly that several keys cracked under the pressure. That's it. I don't care if I get fired or arrested. I am not going to sit around while an innocent kid gets murdered. Six hours later. Oh, uh, my everything. Naruto thought weakly as he slowly returned to the realm of the conscious. His body was aching from head to toe. His head felt like it was about to split open, and when he tried to open his eyes they ended up snapping shut again thanks to the bright glaring light that burned his pupils. Blinking a few times until his eyes adjusted to the light, the whiskered blonde groggily looked around in confusion as he saw a bunch of unknown men and women in medical gear scrambling around him in apparent panic. He could barely understand anything they were saying due to their overlapping voices and his ears ringing like hell, something about an anomaly and anesthetic failure. Why what the hell? Where am I? He wondered while trying to get up, only to be stopped by the restraints around his head, neck, chest, waist, legs, arms, and hands. Hell, even his fingers and tail were bound, and a bite guard crammed in his mouth. What's going on? How did I get here? The last thing he remembered was taking Jerry home after saving her life. Before he could start to get his thoughts together, however, he spotted a flicker of movement in the corner of his eye and a plain-looking man wearing a black suit walked in front of him holding an AR-15 assault rifle. Quickly realizing what the man intended to do once he pointed the weapon at him, Naruto started to struggle against his restraints, tears forming at his eyes as various parts of his body erupted in agony. Hasta la vista, you freak of nature, the man said in a cold tone his finger hovering just centimeters over the trigger. Just before he could fill this particular protagonist's guts with lead, however, the lights suddenly went out, bathing the room in complete darkness. What the hell? What just dash crack thud? The sound of the man's body falling to the floor echoed trough the room as Naruto went completely still. As his eyes rapidly adjusted to the darkness, he started to make out an unknown figure standing over his would-be executioner with a large object in their arms that they dropped while walking towards him. Once they were right in front of him, the emergency lighting kicked on and Naruto's eyes widened in shock as he easily recognized the face of the person who was now undoing his bindings. Pa, hot spring lady, he exclaimed as soon as the bite guard was pulled out of his mouth. Yep, name's Riley by the way, Riley said, a small giggle slipping past her lips at the nickname he'd called her. Why are you here? Where is here? Yao, why does everything hurt so much? Naruto demanded his voice hitching his pain through his chest as the bar there was removed. It's a long story, I'll explain after I get you out of here, Riley said after finishing with the legs, grabbing a nearby scalpel and using it to cut through the straps holding his hands and fingers in place. As soon as the last one was undone, Naruto sat up from the table with a grimace and stood up on badly wobbling legs. Taking a few shaky steps forward, he stumbled a bit before squawking indignantly when Riley grabbed the scruff of his shirt, and hoisted him into her arms. Oi, put me down. No, we'll go faster this way, and we only have about five minutes before the power turns back on. Besides, they cut out a chunk of your left femur while you were out. My what? Your upper leg bone. Didn't you ever take biology class in school? Bio what? Never mind. Riley said with a sigh, setting Naruto on her back piggyback style before taking off running. Using every shortcut she knew of, it only took the chief computer operator a minute and a half to reach the nearest staircase while avoiding her confused and panicking co-workers. It took another three minutes to run down the stairs all the way to ground floor and one to reach a side exit that led to the employee parking zone. Oh man, I need to hit the gym more, Riley huffed out while rushing across the lot to her car, the sweat on her forehead glistening in the rays of the early sunlight as she set Naruto on the hood and reached into her back pocket, before freezing when she found nothing but lint. Oh shit. What? What's wrong? Naruto asked in concern. I forgot my keys in my locker. Riley said while punching the top of her car. Then let's go on foot. Naruto said. Only for the redhead to shake her head. No point. The power's going back on any second and when it does so do dash. 
Bwe bwe. The alarms. Riley finished in a dull tone as the lights of the Hypnos building popped back on and the air was filled with wailing. Crap. Now can we run? Naruto asked. Riley opened her mouth to point out the futility of that, but was cut off when a black Camaro with tinted windows pulled up in front of them. Both tensed up ready to bolt, but Riley quickly relaxed as the driver door opened and Tally's head peeked out. Come on. She squeaked before ducking back in. Smiling widely, Riley quickly grabbed Naruto and squeezed into the passenger side with him on her lap. Tally, I could kiss you right now, she said, causing the brunette to blush lightly in embarrassment. Now what are you waiting for, Florit? Tally didn't need to be told twice as her foot slammed the gas pedal all the way down and her car shot off like a bat out of hell. Okay, now can someone tell me what the hell just happened? Naruto asked once the car settled into regular traffic, doing his best to ignore the pair of breasts currently squishing against the back of his head. You know all those wild-o, Digimon that are running around? Riley asked, correcting herself mid-sentence since Naruto wouldn't know what wild one meant. Ah uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've been acquainted. Naruto said dully, while raising his hand with the Digivus embedded in it. Right, dumb question. Riley rubbed the back of her head sheepishly before clearing her throat. Well, you see me and Tally work for, well worked for now, that place we just busted you out of. Our job was to track down and prevent Digimon from bio-emerging into the real world. You've been doing a lovely job then, Naruto said sarcastically, before flinching when Riley gently flicked one of his ears. Don't sass my work, little man, it isn't easy. Riley said with a frown. Anyway, our job was to monitor, block, and or capture these Digimon, or wild ones as we call them. Then you showed up? What's that supposed to mean? Naruto yelped as the redhead he was sitting on suddenly grabbed the end of his tail. Yanking the fluffy appendage out of her grasp, he sent her what would have been a powerful glare if his face wasn't as red as a tomato. Don't touch that. Giggling at the admittedly cute expression, Riley held her hands up in a placating manner. Sorry, sorry, couldn't resist, I was just curious what it felt like. Just get back to the explanation, he grumbled while pointedly wrapping his tail around his waist like a belt, causing Riley to giggle again before frowning. To put simply, you showing up caused my boss's boss to act like a dumbass and order your capture last night, so you could be studied thoroughly, she said, practically spitting out the last words. Well, that would explain why my everything hurts. Naruto said while glancing back down at the various bandaged sections of his mostly nude form. Wait a second. Snapping his head back down, Naruto's face invented a new shade of red once he realized that the only thing he was wearing was a pair of black boxer briefs. Finally noticed, huh? Riley asked with chuckle as Naruto sent her an annoyed glare. Back to the subject on hand, I didn't like what the higher-ups were planning to do with you, so I decided to bust you out. My friend here was a bit of an unexpected but very thankful surprise. Speaking of which, how did you know where to find us? The redhead asked her friend slash coworker. You left your terminal on, Tally said quietly, causing Riley to pause for a second before palming her face with a loud smack. Hey, do either of you have a phone I can use? Naruto asked out of the blue. Meanwhile, Nanaka residence. Where is that boy? Seiko muttered, her fingers tapping against the table in a steady rhythm. I'm sure he's fine mother, Naruto has shown that he is capable of taking care of himself, Rumiko said in an assuring tone as she ate a bowl cereal, though the mild shaking of her hand belied her true concern. He's also shown that he attracts trouble more than a magnet does metal, Seiko said back to her daughter with a sigh. Naruto's probably just helping that girl from yesterday still, Rinamon said after taking a bite of her own breakfast, which consisted of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a glass of orange juice. Her tamer sat beside her eating the same. An annoyed look in her eyes as she stared at her perfectly manicured and baby blue painted nails. Not only that, her skin now had a healthy glow to it and her hair smooth as silk. That does sound like something he would do. Rumiko agreed with a nod, her and her mother having been told of the incident at the school by the foxy Digimon last night. I do hope that the poor girl is okay. What she went through must have been pretty traumatizing. Speaking of traumatizing events, Rika, how have you been doing since their arrival? Seiko said, pausing slightly as she glanced towards Rinamon, who didn't even so much as blink at the comment as she continued to eat her sandwich. I'm fine, Grandma, Rika muttered, stuffing the last bite into her mouth before starting chugging down her orange juice. Of course, this would have been more convincing if the hand holding her glass wasn't trembling just like her mother's. Sighing at the blatant denial, Seiko backed off for the moment since she knew if she tried pushing her granddaughter for answers now, Rika would just shut her out. 
As a tense was beginning to settle over them, however, the sound of the phone ringing filled the air. I'll get it. That's probably Naruto now, Rinamon stated while sipping at her OJ as the elderly woman left to answer the phone. Yeah, right. That idiot barely knows how to turn the TV on, let alone operate a phone, Rika said while plopping her now empty glass down. 20 bucks says otherwise. You don't even have 20 bucks. I will when I win. Oh, that's it, you're on. You were what? Dang it. Rika groaned while pulling out her wallet. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.